Hello friends. I hope all of you are studying well. As you all know, till now there is no information from UPSC that when the exam is going to happen. But we have to assume that the exam is happening on time, and that's why there is no scope for leniency. Keep working hard and assume that the exam is taking place on time. Today I am here with my first video on an issue which is very important. As we all know, the world is fighting the madness of Corona, and at the global level, the Corona cases have closed 13 lakh cases. This is not a small number. Thousands of people have died, and the world economy has almost come to a standstill. Almost the activity is on a standstill. Nothing much is happening when we, when we look at the economic front. And when we look at India, the cases are relatively much lower. We are still approximately hovering around 4,000 cases in the country, but still we do not know what lies in the future. We are still not done when the corona epidemic is going to end and what will be its impact on India. But for now, we have to see how Corona is going to affect Indian economy. But before starting the topic, let's see what is happening when it comes to Corona. The whole country is fighting Corona. And I see no member of the society is behind when it comes to solve the issue of Corona. Governments are working day in day out. Administration is working 24 into 7 to solve it. Police force, medical staff, paramedics, nurses, everybody, everybody is fighting it. And I see the country is united and speaking in one voice to fight it. Nobody is left behind, everybody is fighting it. From top to the bottom, from centre government, the state government, to the village level, to the small cities, everybody is helping and working in tandem with the administration and the state to solve it. People are collecting lakhs of funds to help the poor, to help the migrants. Political parties, whether in power or oppositions, are helping the people to solve it. I have never seen in my 34 years of life that people are so united in fighting any cause in India. They have never come together in such a huge number. This has shown that India is a very strong country and we are coming together as a nation. Well, for example, I want to see the same administration which don't used to work efficiently, but now we can see the efficiency of the administration. Why? What is the reason? The reason lies in our democracy. Because the power lies, the actual power lies in the hands of political executive, and they are twenty-four seven putting pressure on every section that. Nobody should go hungry. There should be proper facilities at our hospitals and our medical, uh, uh, also medical institutions. And they are ensuring that we should stop the community transfer of cases. We should stop Corona as soon as possible. The death rate because of Corona should be minimized. All this is happening of a democracy. Our people, our government is regularly putting pressure and is regularly working to handle it. So now shifting on a topic of our today discussion is the Corona effect. How it is going to impact Indian economy. No section of the society is, is left behind when it comes to impact of Corona Indian economy. From top big industries to the migrant laborers and agricultural laborers, all are suffering in one way or another. They are all are suffering. Some are some are suffering because their production has stopped, and some are suffering that they are not able to get a proper food. A two-day food is becoming an issue for majority of migrant laborers and workers in India. Middle class is impacted. Old age is impacted. Young population is impacted. Women is impacted. Children is impacted. Because things has almost come to a shutdown. 
people doesn't have work or they cannot go outside and work no activity sitting place people have less and less money already whatever small savings indians have they are slowly and gradually uh, withering away they are losing it all because expenses are taking place but the income is not coming so the loss is happening to everybody and from global to local everybody is getting impacted but when we see it in india india is a peculiar case when we look at what effect of corona on indian economy why is so because we are second second largest second largest populous country in the world we have highest density of population one of the highest density of population in india thirdly we have large number of migrant workers fourthly most of the workers are in the informal sector again large number of workers or large number of population is what still agrarian based and we are right now in a phase of harvest season is time to cut down the crops and sell it in the mandis farmers are saving facing good number of problems when it comes to the agriculture activities time to harvest and time to sow new new crops crops but farmers doesn't have sufficient resources now to go for the new crops so the large number of peculiar conditions and one more thing very important before corona india economy was already slowing down so we were already on a slow trajectory but and the corona have, has also added to it and we are now slowing down our economy has come to a halt now what impact it will have on an economy let's see what impact the corona will have impact will have on an economy first thing is we are going to face huge employment crisis we do not know what will happen to this migrant laborers we do not know when the factories will start we do not know when the agriculture activity will take its due course we do not know when the markets will open so employment crunch huge impact secondly if th if things run well properly there will be huge pressure on rupee we already witnessing decline in the rupee vis a vis dollars so rupee will be the another victim it will fall it will depreciate if the steps are not taken away exports exports will reduce huge reduction in exports already i've met a i've read a uh, article in news with exporters have gone and met the ministers and they've written to them that if proper steps are not taken to the to address the problem of exports they might lose their market to the chinese because we have we have read in the newspaper that china's economic activity has started taking place and if we do not address the problem of exporters of india they are saying that soon or later soon or later we are going to lose the market to chinese so we have to be very careful when it comes to exports thirdly agriculture fourthly agriculture sector as i already told you harvest season it requires huge labor to cut out the crops to sell them in the market but agriculture sector is facing labor crunch for example in rajasthan people come with their machines to cut down the wheat crop but because of lockdown now the machines are not coming up farmers are facing a problem if they will not harvest the crops properly if they will not sell it how will are they going to sow the new crops this it needs finance it needs resources it needs it needs seeds it needs fertilizer and pesticides agriculture a big issue and another issue which is going to take place in india is uh, small in the small businesses as you all know crores of 
families are dependent on small businesses. They are the backbone of an economy. We need industries, micro, small and medium enterprises, small retailers. They are completely shut down. They have no raise of income. Few, large number of them have taken loans from the banks and financial institutions. They have, they have thousands of lakhs of people are working with them. And if they do not pay them, the people who are dependent on them will, will cannot survive. And if they do not have income, how are they going to pay the wages and salaries of workers who are working with them? So, another issue. So, these are the basic issues which Indian economy is going to face. These are not exhaustive. These are some important factors. We will discuss them as the class moves forward. We will discuss, we will bring new more points in the same, the same issue that how Corona is going to impact or is impacting in the economy. Before that, before moving forward, I want to discuss what strategy India has taken to fight Corona in terms of economic area. What's the trade-off which I want to discuss regarding on the Corona issue. As we all know, there were two options for India. Whether to go for lockdown or whether to solve economy. United States of America President Trump always supported economy. He was openly in favor of saving the economy. And for that, he is ready on the damage being done by Corona on the health of the United States of America. And we see the United States Corona cases has closed 3 lakh because they focus more well on economy. Nothing is right or wrong. It depends on the political executive and the condition of the country. But India chooses to go for lockdown. Why lockdown? I support this strategy. Lockdown was an option for India. Was the best option we had. Why? Because we all know India has a huge population, second largest populous, populous country in the world, high density of population, and third, and thirdly, why? Because our health infrastructure is not sufficient to address the problem if the corona takes spread take to the community level. So we have taken a cautious step. We have taken a precautionary step that the corona should not go at the community level. Even if it goes at the community level, the damage should be minimum. We have gone with the lockdown. And I think in my point, this is the right step to be taken, keeping in mind the population, resources, and the health infrastructure of the country. I support it. But is it sufficient? The answer is no. If we have gone for lockdown, what we have done? We have saved lives. Good step. We have saved lakhs of lives. 8% of India's population, approximately 8% is the Asian population. That is 60 years and above. And we all know that the corona effect is majorly on the Asian people. So we have saved lakhs of lives by going for lockdown. But there is a trade-off. I will come and explain the word trade-off. But there is a trade-off. Trade-off what? We are losing on economic part. Niti Aayog chairman, vice chairman, sorry, said that Indian economy growth has stopped. We have almost reached the level of nil still the time from the time we have gone for lockdown. So we, when it comes to economy, we are almost at the nil level because economic activity is not taking place. So the growth is not taking place. Now with the lockdown we have saved lives, but with closing of the economy or with stopping of the economy, we have lost what? Livelihoods. Crores of people have gone unemployed. People are leaving this, are losing resources. Businesses have shut down. And we do not know for how, how long this shutdown is going to stay here. And what will this long come back? We still do not know. But we are for sure right now 
people are losing livelihood. And Koshik Basu, the former chief economic advisor to the government of India, has already said that it's the issue of lives versus lives. We are saving lives by going through lockdown, but we might lose lives because of the economic slowdown which India is going to witness in the near future. So a proper step has to be taken. Because if you are saving lives by countering Corona, we should be very careful that we should not lose lives by going for economic shutdown. We have to be careful. It doesn't mean we cannot do anything. We must, we can and we must do something about it. And government is taking steps. We will discuss whether those steps, steps are sufficient or something else has to be done. Again, the study by uh, various economists have, seen, uh, have, have said that famines which have taken place in the history of the world, the, the death rate because of famines is at times equal to the death rate of certain epidemics. It means that we have to be careful, we should be aware, we should, our, our country or our government, our state should take, take necessary steps to address the problem of the economy. And again, one more thing, I, as I told, that by one for lockdown, we have saved the life of God, the life of all Asian people. But we have lost the livelihood of crores of youths of the country. And once the economic slowdown takes place, it has a multiplier effect. It goes on for a long period of time. And certain economists say that the slowdown which is happening at the global level because of this shutdown, it might be worse than the 2008 subprime crisis. And the world is already on the verge of recession. And, uh, and the people, and the, uh, the, again, the experts say the European, Western European countries are going to face a challenge of minus 6% economic slowdown. US will again be on negative degree. But the hope is here for India. India will be in a positive to, to slow down in growth, but India, they say, after post corona, will witness a growth of 2% which is a positive signal for India. Coming back to the point, life versus livelihood, ordinary versus use. This is the trade-offs. Trade-off means to do one thing, you have to lose another. So we have gone for lockdown, we have saved lives, we have worked for the whole million. But we have lost on economic fronts, we have lost livelihoods, we have lost the environment of the use. Now point is, is this country right? Yes, right. Has the government done something? Yes, it has done something. Is it sufficient? Is it not? It is not sufficient. Something else has to be done. We are going to discuss that in the next point. So, what government have done? What government has done? Government has bought a fiscal stimulus package. Fiscal stimulus package of approximately 1.7 lakh lakh crore in the form of Padhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. And the focus of this package is that nobody should go hungry. There should be proper protection <coughs> for the migrant laborers. There should be 500 rupee in every account. In every account of a woman who have who have an account to Jandan account, who have a Jandan account. This is a few point. Fiscal stimulus. The government and let's understand what is fiscal stimulus. It has varied forms, but it means when it comes, it comes when there is a economic slowdown. The state has to take certain steps to boost the growth or to boost the income of the people. It can be form of in the direction of taxes, it can be in form of government spending on infrastructure, it can be in form of government giving direct money to the people. Like for example, 
गवर्नमेंट थ्रू प्रधानमंत्री गरीब कल्याण योजना इज गिविंग फाइव हंड्रेड टू एवरी वूमन दिस अदर एग्जाम्पल सो वॉट फिजिकल स्टिमुलस इट मीन्स गवर्नमेंट स्पेंडिंग मनी स्टेट स्पेंडिंग मनी स्टेट स्पेंडिंग ऑन रिसोर्सेज so that people should people must not support so people should have resources and if people have money they will what they will create demand and demand will create what growth and growth will create what employment so this is the major importance of what the fiscal stimulus but because this stimulus is coming for what because of corona so this stimulus should primarily is focusing there on the poorer because Because of Corona, the weaker you are, the vulnerable you are, the most you suffer. For example, everybody is suffering. I'm not denying that. But who are the major sufferers? Major sufferers are daily workers, migrant laborers. Major sufferers who? Major sufferers are the people working in the informal sector. Ninety percent of India's economy is dependent on informal sector. For example, if the shop is shut down, if the shop shop keeper is not making any money. And he's employing three people. What he will do? He will say to his workers, "Right now, I do not have jobs, so I cannot pay your wages. So I will call you when I need you." Those three people have lost their jobs. Even the shopkeeper himself, he if he is not earning, from which from which account he can pay his money? He is also the leader. So he also does not have money. So this is a large informal sector working in India. So stimulus of India is rightly focusing on who the weaker and the poorer. But is it sufficient? No. Again, the government is we go back to the next point. Government is spending on distributing ration, wheat and rice free of cost through the PDS system. State governments are giving pensions. State governments are focusing on the widow or the weaker section or the aged and giving them regular pension. So money should reach the people. Every government, and this are all examples of what fiscal stimulus. But as I already told you, economic Indian economy was already slowing down before the Corona attack, and it has only added to the problems that Indian economy was already suffering. Was already suffering. So how we already had a fiscal deficit approximately three point five percent. So now the government has gone for another one point seven five lakh crore. So this will be out of which money? This will be out of the government's consolidated fund of India's money. So, it, so government has to offer something else because this is not sufficient. This is not sufficient. When experts again from newspapers, from various institutions, which I get together information, experts have recommended certain points that what India should additionally do to help the problem. As I always have to do is economy. Uh, so no good bosses. Economy. We have gone for about, but something has to be done in the economic aspect. We have done certain things, but they are not sufficient. So there are certain expert opinions which include Ramathe Sen, Koshik Basu, Panor Roy of NDTV, and etc., which has given several five or six points that India should do to address the problem of Corona affecting economy. What are those points? One by one, I will tell you. First thing. What I am telling you is, what are the solutions? What India should do to address the problem of Corona on Indian economy, particularly? First point: I already told you, one point seven five lakh crore has been given as a fiscal stimulus, which is one percent of India's GDP. Expert opinion says it must be. They say India needs a stimulus of four to five percent. One percent is not sufficient. Keeping in mind the huge population, the huge needs of different businesses and different sections of the society. So they are appealing of four to five percent. Means we have already gone for one percent. There is another need for three to four percent, which approximately comes out to be five to seven lakh crore. They say 1.75 lakh crore is not sufficient. We should spend another 5 to 7 lakh crore as fiscal stimulus package from the central government to 
address the economic problem. First step, and this could be in any form. This could be, for example, a big, if a big businesses are planning to lay off. Lay off means that they are asking their people not to come to the job. They are asking, we cannot pay salaries because we do not have money right now. For example, I am taking a company. What central government can do? They can ask their businesses not to go for layoff, rather, 50% of something of the salaries of your workers will be paid by the government itself. So, this kind of model has to work. This kind of model. Another it could be if 500 for this, this month people have been given, it can be increased to 1000 or 1500. If not, if why 500 only is done on account? This can also be made what? Universal. And just give me an example. 500 has been paid only to general accounts, only to women accounts, those women. But this can be what? All the general accounts, irrespective of men or women, 500 rupees will be paid. This step, I am giving an example that if you are bringing 5 to 7 lakh more extra by this to stimulus, there are various ways through which this can be paid. For example, in the aviation industry. Because it has come to a hold, and sooner or later it will demand a fiscal package from the government. Where it can be paid, it can be paid where? From the fiscal stimulus. This, these are few examples. Second step. Second step is we have a FRBM Act, and we already have an encasing panel which recommended for a fiscal uh, deficit level. Central and state government has to achieve. But this condition, the corona condition on the economy is an abnormal. Encasing panel also recommended that in abnormal condition, fiscal targets can be breached. So breaching of fiscal targets. Next point is that. One year period. This period, for example, 2021 financial year, should be taken as an exceptional case in which fiscal targets must be breached, not only by the centre governments, but also power should be given or space should be given to the state governments. Because actually fighting against Corona is taken by the state governments. It's a disaster. Health is under the control of the state governments. So maximum effort is made by the state governments. So they need resources. So they should be given a big fiscal space to spend, to a loan can be given by the centre government to state governments so that they can take necessary measures to counter corona, to address the problem of the labor section and to ensure that after corona, businesses should keep working. So, and, and to save people who are based on salaries and wages to their employment. So, fiscal targeting breach is required right now by both the centre and the state government. Third step, we have huge huge amount of stocks, food grains, food grains, particularly rice and wheat, in the grounds, somewhere around approximately 60 million tons, or it could be more, tons of food grains, white and wheat, rice and wheat are there in the grounds, and most of them is kept unused for years. It's time now to go for universal distribution of these food grains. An expert said, faster, not clever. I'll make you listen this point. Faster, not clever approach. For example, right now food grains are given only to those who are BPL and whose name are in the National Food Security Act. But again, there are a large number of Inclusion and exclusion error. Now we are focusing on the exclusion error. Still, large number of people are there who are kept out of the food security despite they deserve that. So, what is the solution? Go for universalization. Because now we do not want to look for the people who do not deserve and are getting the PTS. Or we do not want right now focus on just on the those who deserve should only get. We need a faster approach. That sooner and sooner, sooner the better, the food grains should reach the 
poorer section of society. So the best solution is what? Universal. If you are resident or citizen of this country, just because you are citizen or resident, you will get what? Food grains. Because of this, we can do what? We will be able to enter the problem of hunger of majority of the population. And already, large amount of these food grains are not being used. Large, huge amount of this food grains is wasted, rotten. It's better that before it gets wasted, we should distribute it to the people. Fourth point. Fourth point in the sense what the state should do or the what the government should do. As we already discussed, through Pradhan Mantri Gareep Kalyan Yodhana, 500 rupees to every woman account only of a general account is being given. We need another fourth point is cash payments. As already this government focuses too much on e governance. So we have general Aadhaar mobile identity. So most of the data of the PDAR system population has been digitized through the jam jam community. General Aadhaar and mobile. So we should ensure that the poorer and the weaker should get a regular cash payment. Because if they have cash, because it is not only rice and wheat that they want. They might want medicines, they sometimes might want vegetables, they sometimes want oil or pulses, so which is not covered in large, large scale to the government. So what is the solution? The cash payments. We, if, because now they are not earning, they don't have work. They are the laborers, they are workers, they are poor section. So cash payments till this corona thing is gone should be given to the poor section. Fifth point. Fifth point is focusing on small businesses, small and medium businesses. For example, retailers, shopkeepers, micro industries, bakery shops, etc. Now they are, as I already told you, they are self-employed as well as they are employing mass in of society. Studies show there are approximately 5 lakh retailers in this country. And if I assume every retailer employs and every retailer employs 3 people, the people come out to be 15 crore. 15 crore people are dependent on what? Small shops and retailers. Third, and along with this small shops and retailers, 15 crore people working and an average family member in India is 5. So 15 to 5, 75 crore people are dependent on small businesses. We need a backup for these people. They have their already, they have their future obligations in terms of getting the daughter married, they have loans, house loans, they have business, taken business loans, education loans for their children and now their business shut down. If we do not stop them not from being, 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 being going bankrupt, I think India is going to face a big future hurdle because of this shutting down. Packet is needed for small businesses. Last thing one, uh, two things are in, uh, remaining. As I already told, this is the harvest season. Central government and state governments, all of them should work in coordination to address the problem of agriculture sector. Sufficient steps have to be taken so that the harvest takes place properly. Somehow the part of production should be sold in the market. Somehow payment should reach to the amount of the uh, farmers and Proper management has to be made, proper system has to be made so that they are ready for the next carry crop. Because if we delay too long for the carry crop to, to be sown, I think the whole cycle of Indian economy is going to face this issue. Because 50% of the population is dependent on agriculture. And if they don't have money and resources with them, and if they don't bring the crops, it will have a multiplier effect on the whole sector of the economy. This is a six step we will take. And the last one, the seventh one is. Big businesses, big businesses are laying off because their industries are shut down, the economic activity is not taking place. So they are planning for the future, they might lay off the big workers. The government has to stop these big industries to lay off the employees. 
So the big businesses cannot do themselves. Some help should come from the government. As I already told, that's why we need four to five percent of expenditure, fiscal stimulus of GDP. Part of that money should be given as in salaries to the workers or salaried class for working in these big industries. They need money. The, they doesn't have sufficient bank accounts or sufficient balance in their accounts which can be used for the purpose of paying salaries for a longer period of time to the workers who are not able to work right now. Part of salary must be given by the government so that the big businesses do not lay off. These are few steps which I am discussing with you. That what, how the corona is, doing, is impacting the Indian economy and what steps can be taken. So before ending this lecture, I want you people to work hard, stay safe. Because still we do not know how is this going, corona going to be in the next one month or so. Stay safe, stay with your family, keep calm, regular exercise, eat healthy, help the poor. They need us the most. Ensure that people who are in your vicinity, for example, for example, uh, the 10 households around your house, nobody should sleep hungry. That's the responsibility of us people who are the have right now in the society. We are the haves, we have sufficient resources right now. So these are the points which I am discussing with right now. I am ending up this lecture. I will come with new lecture very soon and you will upload this lecture on YouTube and you will YouTube and I will share the link with you. Thank you so much.